Hey there guys, it's Rick Cutesy here with Airgun Web. You're home for old school Airgun reviews and we'll retell you the facts, not fluff. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at my Avenger 22 caliber. We got some cool things planned for this one. Stay with us. All right, so plan A was we were gonna rebuild this one because I thought it had a leak. You can get the kits right from pyramidair.com. You can buy the whole assembly. It's got everything you need, including the regulator. So that's pretty awesome that they make those available to you. But when I pulled it out of storage, filled it full of air, uh, it was a little bit low, but I filled it full of air and it's holding air. So there's no need to rebuild this one. This one's actually good to go. But I have been wanting to maybe give it a bit of a, a facelift. So I reached out to Buckrail and they have a whole tactical conversion kit for this. Super pumped about that. Really excited to actually get this done. And we're gonna put it in its new Buckrail conversion kit. I've got something cool in this bag I'm gonna show you guys. Uh, yeah, but let's kind of walk through that process. It's not hard, but there are a couple tricks if you've never taken one of these apart. See if I can help you out so that you don't break stuff because it is a plastic stock and we want to do the best we can to not. Break it. Okay, so what do we have in the bag here? I'll spoiler alert a little bit. This is a new product from Buckrail. This is a moderator, but it has a basically a unique thread and it's like quarter turn tight. There's no threading it on, it's just quarter turn done. This assembly slides into the tube, it holds the barrel, provides some baffles, and then gives you your mounting point for your moderator. So that I think is pretty cool. We'll add that at the very end of this video. And all of this, Hopefully, if all goes well, we're going to be taking this out to the range tomorrow and shooting our 22 cal pellet tests. We'll be shooting JSB, uh, HN, and JTS pellets through this to see how it does. I'll make sure the regulators tune. We've already tuned like the bullpup. I'll make sure we're getting similar performance out of this and we'll see how she does. But let's go ahead and get to the fun part and we're going to replace this stock. Now, this stock is kind of a clamshell stock, which means it's it's got halves and parts and connected and all kinds of fun stuff. So the first thing we need to do is we need to separate these two halves here. So let's do that. Obviously, make sure your gun's unloaded. We'll go ahead and make sure it's on safe. Okay, you can drain it if you really, really want to, and maybe that's the safest thing. But we're really not working with the mechanics of the gun. We're just taking the stock off. So I think we're okay. But if you would feel better, go ahead and drain it. It's easy enough to do. Bleed valve is right there. Takes a couple minutes and you're all set. All right, so we need to take these screws out right here. And I'll see if I can remember to tell you the sizes. This is a three, and I think that is correct. So yeah, so we're three mils on these guys. Now, I may have one of these in the wrong spot. We'll find out. There may be one that's a little shorter, and that might have gone to the, yeah, let's see, is that one? Okay, so that one actually goes back here to this grip. We'll get to that in a minute. I'll fix that when I put this, because I have fitted all this stuff to make sure we're good to go here. But what we need to do here is separate, um, we need to separate this, and I'm wondering if it's going to be better to separate from this side. Okay. We're going to do a couple more screws here. So there's our three mil for these guys. We're going to need a smaller one. And this is just two, two mil. And we're just going to need to take out one of these, okay? And I believe it's this front one. If I get this backwards, then we'll take out the back one. But I think it's the front one. And let's go ahead and take these out on this side too. Hopefully the overhead cameras giving us a decent enough angle here. Yeah, I don't know, maybe the long one goes to the rear stock. Let's see. Yeah, I bet you that's it. I bet you that one goes to the handle. So I know we have one oddball that's gonna go back here to hold this in. Um, we'll get to that here in a bit. All right, so what we need to do now is separate the stock. Now, if you try prying from here, you're gonna be there all day, it's not gonna work. 
Now you can try get it separated, but you need to separate this part here, right here. There's pins, and I'll show you where they are. But those, that's the that's the secret right there. Okay, so you gotta get this off, and there, and these pieces just slide out. Okay, so it's these pins right here, these guys right here, that go into this this section right here and that's what keeps it kind of shut and if you're trying to pry this from the bottom side then not, it's not gonna work you're gonna find yourself uh, not happy all right so here's our frame so let's go ahead and pull this out this is the screw and I think this is supposed to take the long one I don't know let's see here okay that is no another long one I I don't know how's that We've got a rear screw here. Um, we're not going to use those anyway. So when you take yours apart, I guess, play, pay close attention as to which screw came from what hole. <laughs> All right, this is, oops, I think it's four mil. Yep, four millimeter. Okay, that's that. Now, I wanted to check something. I'm going to put these pieces aside. Okay. We need to take this off. This just slides off here. Okay. But what I wanted to check is this part to see how all of these screws go together. Now, it looks like there's a single screw here. Let's see if that's going to go to this spot does look like that's the case. And then I don't know if we have a rear screw. There's a hole for it down here in the in the in the grip. But in order to get to it, we got to take the grip off. And I don't know if it lines up. Does it line up? No, it doesn't. So this we do not need. Okay, we don't need to put a screw down in through there cuz it's not going to line up on anything. Um, so we can go ahead and drop this on just like that, and then this screw should go. Oh, you know what? Can't do this yet. I apologize. I forgot something very important. We gotta put a buffer tube on. Okay, in order to do that, we put our bolt, our nut down in there. So you guys can see that with the GoPro camera. Our nut goes down in the grip, and then we're gonna line this up like this. In order to do this, we're gonna need, I think, a 14 millimeter. So let me grab that. So here we go, our 14 millimeter. Pretty sure it's 14 millimeter. Let's double check. Uh, let's see, 14. No, it's much smaller. It's 11, okay, so 11 mil. Going to need an extension. Let's see, is this going to give us long enough? Let's see. Oh, yeah, we're good to go. All right, so we've got our 11 millimeter with a little extension. All we need to do is get it started, right? And it's very cool that he's provided us a bit of a guide here. So, whoops. Get started. It um, you don't have to try and get it straight. It's going to be straight by default, which is I think pretty cool. Come on, are we biting? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There we go. That's gorgeous. Okay. Okay. There we are. All right. So there's our rear stock. Okay, now, this is a mil-spec buffer tube size, so if you wanted to run something different, he sent me a Magpul buttstock, but anything you have that's mil-spec is gonna work just fine. Okay, so let's get this set up. I like the way they sort of did the uh, this shape. It looks like a magwell on an AR. I think it's kind of cool. Uh, it keeps all your all your adjustments right there. I think that was pretty smart. 
Okay, so we've got this. Let's put this in here. And that is a, oops, uh, looks like that's a three. Oh yeah. There we go. All right, so that's that. That was extremely easy. And you still have access to your hammer spring adjuster. All your adjustments are still wide open. Actually, I think they're more accessible. That's pretty cool. Yeah, liking it. Now, let's, let's drive this on. This has three holes. You see them? Probably put them like this, you got three holes. So it's gonna go like this. It's gonna slide right on. Now, I loosen these up. There's some screws in here. I loosen those up and we are on. So that's that. We wanna tighten these up. Those are going to be two and a half, I think. We tighten them up. Now this is the M-Lock rail. So I've got some M-Lock components at the range. So I can go ahead and put a weaver rail here, put some pick rails, weaver rails, whatever, and we're all set. So we run a bipod, some uh, maybe a laser, maybe a light, and that's good to go. I do believe, and I was looking on his website, so I have to call him. He also has like another barrel band if you think you need one. But this is supported pretty well. Right? So it is, it's on there. Um, and it feels great. I mean, the quality of how this feels versus the factory stock, this feels really good. All right. Let's go ahead and put our stock on it. And again, because this was notched so it was, you know, straight, you don't have to use a tool to tighten, loosen, tighten, loosen to try and get it to line up right. It just works, which is pretty neat. Um, I really like Magpul accessories. They really feel good in the hand. So, but maybe you like UTG, maybe you like something else, maybe you got some extra parts left over from an AR build and you just want to use your own stuff. Well, I mean, you can get a co cool thing about but what Buck. Excuse me. The cool thing about what Buckrail brings to the table is you can use as much or as little of his parts as you want. So if you already have the buttstock and all you need is the assembly, you don't have to buy everything. You can buy just what you need. There we are. That is so cool. That is wild. Okay. All right, so that's that. Now let's do the moderator, okay? So we'll put that here so people can see it. And I don't know if we'll go through at the range tomorrow before and after. Well, we probably could. I don't know. I'm gonna basically go for accuracy with the pellets tomorrow at the range. But if we have time, we'll see. I've got a bunch of videos to shoot. If there's time, maybe I'll do a before and after with this additional moderator. Okay, so that screws in there, and now, again, it's just a quarter turn, and we're on. So that is it. That is the full assembly that took like no time, right? So you've got a fully railed chassis sort of gun. It's thinned down. Um, the parts feel really, really good. So we'll drop a scope on this tomorrow. We'll, uh, we'll make this one of our upcoming videos, but I really like Obviously, we've been doing a lot of buckrail stuff because it's just so dang -um cool. Uh, if you want to check out these parts, you check them out at www.buck-rail.com. If you like the Air Venturi Avenger, check that out. That's pyramidair.com. Really cool gun. Great gun. Affordable. Super tunable. And when you can drop it in a rail like this, I think I like it better than the wood stock. Yeah. Um, I'm coming more and more around to the chassis guns. I know rail guns, black guns, it's got an appeal and it's got a utility that I'm really liking. So yeah, I think this makes the whole platform that much more awesome to me. Now as a quick teaser, uh, I have talked to uh, Pyramid Air. So we'll have the Avenge X coming in. I've ordered a tactical with the tube and 177 with a 22 caliber conversion. So that's what I've got coming in. I will eventually have the conversion from the tube to the bottle. So when we get all those parts in, 
we're going to do a whole series on the Avenge X, and you can bet. Pretty excited about that. Heard you guys asking for more 177 coverage, and we're definitely going to do it. I would also consider uh, picking up an Avenger and 177 just for giggles because uh, I think it would be fun. Uh, if I've had the Avenge X and the Avenger, we can maybe do some side-by-side -side stuff, which would be kind of cool. But anyway, that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys like this footage. hope you guys like this content. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll do the very best I can to answer them and get to them. I read everything. I don't always answer everything just because sometimes I don't have time. But hopefully you guys will have grace and mercy on me in the midst of everything anyway. All right, guys, so that's going to be it for now. Again, my name is Rick Huster here with Airgun Web, your home for old school airgun reviews where we tell you the facts, not fluff. Thanks for watching.